Hey folks, thanks for joining us today. I want to show you a quick, cool little trick I picked up from my good friend Aristotle Rufanus about how to use the render to texture node inside of Notch. Now this node is really helpful because what it allows you to do is essentially create a behind the scenes rendering layer, which you can have a whole 3D scene getting rendered, but then having the ability to directly then redirect that as a texture into either a material or any other kind of maybe displacement map or whatever else you might need. Now, this is what we're gonna be building today. I'm gonna to go ahead and delete it and start from the beginning. So the first thing we're gonna do here is take a bunch of spheres, clone them across a plane, to, and then give it a little bit of a sign effector just to make a nice kind of little texture that we like. So I'm gonna go ahead and start by bringing in a clone to mesh node, and I'm gonna connect the root node to that clone to mesh node. Now for my clone to mesh node, I need two things. One of them is the mesh that's gonna be used as kind of the master template of the cloning. Then I'm also gonna need the geometry that I want to actually clone across the points of that mesh. So in both cases, in this example, I can rely on a good old fashioned shape 3D. So I'll go ahead and create one shape 3D and I'm gonna make this a plane. And I'm gonna take the output of it and connect it to the bottom left input of the clone to mesh. And then I'm gonna create another shape 3D, which is going to be the object that I'm going to actually instance across that uh, plane that I just made. And I'm gonna create, connect the output of the clone to mesh into that top input of the shape 3D. Now in this case, a sphere is fine for our example. And you can already see there's a couple of spheres there, but they're pretty much overlapping. So I'm gonna to go to my shape 3D plane here and just start playing with its properties. So maybe I want to make the size bigger, maybe a 10 by 10 size. And then we can see it looks like our shapes of the spheres are getting cloned, but it's running out of clones. So what I can do is go to the clone to mesh, number of clones here is set to 100. So maybe I'll set that to something like 500. And then maybe I'll go to my sphere and actually turn down the radius a little bit just so that we have a very clean grid of spheres. Now, I wanna have this kind of doing a nice little motion here. So I'm gonna look for my clone effectors and I'll just grab a simple one. I'll grab a sine effector for now. So I'll drag and drop that in and I'm gonna take the output of that sine effector and plug it into the second bottom input of the clone to mesh. And then I'm gonna pause the timeline because what I can now do is click on the sign effector and actually see its bounding box and kind of area of influence. Now when I have this, I'm gonna go ahead and start turning up the elements that I want the sign effector to impact. So in this case, probably I want it to do some position Y and you can see as I start to move that, we're starting to see a little bit of that displacement and maybe a little bit of position Z, just a, just a little touch. So now if I go ahead and hit play, we can see I've got that nice rolling wavy texture. Now, if I was gonna use this as a texture on a material, I don't really want this kind of, you know, isometric camera angle on it. I just want a camera that looks top down right onto my grid here. So I can go ahead and search for the camera node, bring in a camera, connect the root to the camera, and then I'll just go ahead and do a nice quick and dirty line up here using the camera controls I have in the top right. I think that's just about good enough for my needs. Now a cool little trick I can do is once I've moved the interactive camera into the position I like, I can just go directly to that camera that I have, right click on it, go to camera options and click set to current view. Now when I do that, it's gonna take all of the transformations that I've done inside of my interactive viewer and actually write them as the properties of that camera. So now great, I have this whole texture set up and now I wanna apply this as a texture and a material to maybe a sphere. Now in normal cases, there's lots of different ways you could do this, but actually one of the easiest and most efficient ways to do this is to actually go and lean on the render to texture node. Now the render to textures node, it does exactly what it says. It creates a separate render stage that happens off screen and provides you with a texture that you can use. So I'm gonna go ahead and drag and drop that in. And what you're going to see are a lot of different inputs and outputs, but really don't be intimidated by it. It's very easy to use. 
So the first thing I'm going to want to do is take my root node and connect it to the top input of the render to texture. And then what I want to do is essentially take this whole scene that I've created and move it under the render to texture root node there. So first thing I'm going to do is disconnect my clone to mesh from the root here. And I'm going to disconnect my camera from the root. And I'm going to actually get, connect them to the render to texture node. And you can almost think of your render to texture node as becoming a secondary root node for all the things underneath it. So I can go ahead and connect the output of this to my clone to mesh and the output of this to my camera. Now we're not going to see anything on screen, but what we can do is go to the render to texture node and either show the render texture, which will give us a little preview of that texture up in the top right here. Or what I can do is disable the render to texture pass, which essentially pushes everything back up to that root node. So now I know this is working and this is feeling pretty good. So now how do I use this as a texture for maybe a material? So first, let me go ahead and create another shape 3D here. And I'm gonna connect this to the root node. And you'll see that when I connect that, that sphere is the only thing seen in the root node because everything under my render to texture, that's being rendered off screen now. That's not affecting the main render in any way at all. So the sign effector, the camera, none of these things are really accessible inside of the main render that I'm creating with my root node. Then I'm gonna go ahead and create a material. And in this case, I'll just use a simple diffuse material. And if I want to connect that diffuse material, I can grab the output and connect it to the first bottom input of my shape 3D. And now I know that I want to get this rendered texture, the texture output of it, into this material. And wouldn't you believe it's really as easy as grabbing that same output and dragging and dropping that to the first input of that color texture, the color texture input of that diffuse material. And you can already see once I've done that, something really cool has happened. What I had created as a kind of separate rendering layer is getting fully rendered out into a flat texture and applied as a material to this new shape 3D that I've created. And we can zoom in on it. And you know, this might not be the greatest piece of art. You know, you're not gonna see this in, in the Guggenheim anytime soon, but the technique really opens up a lot of doors because now not only can you use Notch for creating your scenes, but if you did need to have generative textures or these kind of behind the scenes rendering operations happening for displacement maps or masks, all of this stuff can still happen in the same layer, in the same project, and be fed into a pipeline that's efficient like this with either a render layer or a render to texture to then use those in other parts of your network. So I hope that little trick helps you guys as well, especially if you're doing things like creating different textures of displacement maps. We found it to be super helpful. Hey folks, thanks for watching. If you're serious about learning touch designer and getting into our interactive and immersive industry, I highly recommend you check out the interactive and immersive HQ Pro. It's the only educational resource and community of its kind for touch designer and interactive professionals. You can click the link in the description to learn more about that. And if you like this video, hit that like button. And if you're new here, don't forget to hit subscribe and click on the little bell icon for more awesome free content.